Today in the bunker, we're going to talk about an armored garage for Gaslands. This is an armored garage that I built uh, a number of years ago for a friend of mine was running a, a Car Wars game, and that person is also a viewer of this channel. So they'll probably recognize this piece of terrain. So I knocked this out really fast. I think it was like a day or two before. I just threw it together. So let's put one together and make it a little nicer. Uh, I see a lot of things that I don't do this way anymore. You know, like I said, this was a long time ago. So uh, let's lay it out and get started. All right, so the basic design I'm going to keep, I'm going to build it basically to the same dimensions. And I just, I laid out a little sketch and figured out I need to go this many here and that many there. And, um, you know, that'll depend a lot on what scale you're doing this in. If you're doing it for just straight up gas lands with matchbox cars, then probably something like that. Hopefully you can read my chicken scratch. But it's 150 millimeters across, 100 millimeters at the top. Um, it's 55 millimeters tall. And then same thing for the back piece. And then when you, you'll see, when you cut these out, you cut them in such a way that you use your off cut as a buttress on the sides so you don't really get any waste. All right, so let's lay that out on some foam core and get to it. All right, so I got everything laid out that I'm gonna use for the basic structure. The only other thing we'll have to do is cut out on the front wall, cut out that door, but it'd probably be easier to do it once it's just a loose piece. So um, I just did the measurements, laid this all out with a pencil on the foam core, and I'm just gonna use a straight edge and my trusty razor knife, and we will cut that out. So we'll be right back. All right, so we got everything cut out. Um, I've got the door measured on the front wall, so I'll cut that out as well, and then we'll be ready to start gluing this together. All right, so there's the door cut out. Uh, I also marked inside where the walls will be in relation to the outer edges, because we're going to hot glue everything together just in the interest of time. You could PVA this and put some pins in it. Um, it would be fine. Hot glue works fine. Um, that's how I knocked up this other one was with hot glue and you know it's super neat but you can't really see the inside so it's fine and what we're going to do is kind of dress up the outside a little bit you can see here I left a lot of uh, fairly raw edges on this because it was a rush and I, I didn't hadn't worked much with foam core at that point so I made that a long time ago so we'll make it a little nicer and um, use a little bit better texture on the outside. This is a, a stone texture spray paint and it worked okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not unhappy with the results, but I think we can make it look a little nicer. All right, so when the glue gun heats up, we'll start putting this together. All right, so I also marked on the sides where the buttresses will go. Kind of help us in lining those up, so. Alright, so we're going to start putting this together. Try to get that as square as we can. Use our little square to help us. That's pretty good. Just don't glue it to it like I did. Okay, we'll get our other wall put on. I'm trying to do it so that most of the excess glue is on the inside but you know if it a little gets on the outside it's not a big deal all right so we'll continue doing that to the front and we'll be back and there's our basic carcass put together so we are ready to put on our roof 
and then we'll add our buttresses. We don't want to add the buttresses first because they're going to stick up onto the edge of that roof. So go ahead and put your roof on before you do that. We'll get that stuck on. Okay, and because I wasn't paying really close attention, I managed to have a little bit of a gap there. This wall, I think, is ever so slightly longer than the other one, uh, poor measurement, but in any case, we can fix that. We just filled up the bottom part of that gap with some hot glue, and when we dress up these edges, we will blend that in so you'll never even notice. And be sure to pre-fit your buttresses, too, just to make sure that they're... You, the cut is straight enough and, and all that good stuff. Some of these cuts are a little wonky, but we will make them work. So just add a little bit of hot glue, and then I lay these down on the table to make sure everything is nice and square. I was told once it was hip to be square, but not really sure how true that is. That's uh, everybody's fairly even all the way around. All right, so we'll let that set up a little bit and we'll start dressing it up. And because that gap was kind of huge, uh, I pushed a bead of hot glue down in there and once that sets up, then we'll, we'll cover over it. All right, so to dress up the edges and fill in that gap, we're gonna use our old friend flexible spackle. Um, you could just use PVA. If you don't have any spackle, that's fine. Uh, any number of, any way you've finished the raw edge of foam core is fine here. So we're going to do that just to try and dress it up a little bit and blend everything together. And uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so this stuff is pretty forgiving. Um, it's the flexible kind, but the regular kind works fine here too. And you just spread that on and get you. Kind of a bead going in there, kind of get it pushed down in. And you want to make sure you cover up your foam core nicely and then sort of smooth that down onto the papery face of the foam core. And we'll sand that a little bit and dress it up once it dries or at least sets up good enough for sanding. Okay, so just do that all the way around. And then once it sets up, we'll be back. And while we're waiting for the spackle on the edges to dry so we can sand it a little bit, I went ahead and put PVA on all of the exposed bottom edges. Not that you're ever gonna see them, not that they're going to get paint on them, but that's just the kind of obsessive nature of how I build things sometimes. I didn't do that on this one because I hadn't become that obsessive yet. Anyway, once this sets up, we'll get back to sanding and we'll be right back. All right, so all of the spackle has set up. and I'm just going to use uh, one of these little nail file things to kind of blend that a little bit. And that way you can... Smooth that out. You don't really tear up the paper on your foam core too much. You can get a, a pretty pretty smooth transition. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. Just take your time, and uh, you can make it look pretty decent. So. We'll do that all around the model and be right back. All right, so we've got all that sanded and blended in. And some of it didn't come out quite like I wanted. And you may find that you tear up the paper a little bit doing it, which is something I discovered. Um, just a little white glue will put that back down, help blend that back. So I'm going to put some texture paint on this. It's our Vallejo ground texture. Uh, if you don't have any of that, some very fine playground sand and some PVA will work. Go slow because you don't want to make this whole thing flex by drying on one side and not the other. Uh, or you could just 
stipple on the different colors of tan and gray and, and kind of give it a texture when you paint it as concrete. Uh, there's no real wrong answer there. So just use the, the best things that you got and uh, you know, it'll, look, it'll look fantastic. Now one thing you'll find when using this is that it has a bit of a directionality when you brush it on. I find that it, it helps to have just a tiny bit on your brush and then just sort of stipple it and that helps break up a lot of that directionality, the, the lines, and uh, gives it more of a concrete -y appearance. Is that even a word? I'm not sure. But anyway, it seems to work pretty well. Alright, so we've got a good coat all over that. Looks pretty concrete -y. So we're going to let that dry. Hopefully it won't just warp all the heck, and uh, we'll see what we get. Alright, so that seems to have dried fairly well. I've also taken another offcut of foam core and put that as a backer on there for our door and sealed that bottom. And I'm going to do something similar to this, but I'm, I may change the orientation of the, the folds to be up and down instead of that way. Not sure that it makes any difference. But uh, anyway, we'll cut that and glue it on, see what it looks like. All right, that didn't look too bad. So we're going to go ahead, since this seems to be fairly dry, I'm going to go ahead and prime this uh, with some gray primer, and we'll get started on painting. All right, so that's blended everything nicely together. We'll let that dry well, and then we will put a wash on that and get started. All right, so let's add some black wash. I've got some wash that I mixed up. It's just... 50-50 water and future floor polish with some black paint added and you kind of fine-tune this to be as dark or as light as you want and this lightens up considerably as it dries but it'll help give that stained old concrete appearance which we will then proceed to dry brush over It looks way too dark when you first put it on, but as it dries, it gets a lot better. All right, so we'll finish that and be back. All right, so there's our black wash applied, and we'll let that dry, and then we'll go on to our next step. So that's dried. Um, let's go ahead and we'll start dry brushing with some Quaker Gray and see what that does. If it's showing up very well and for the camera but it is starting to lighten up all the little sort of nubbins on the surface there right, so let's do a little bit of white and that should really make it pop out Again, I don't know if it's photographing very well, but... That is making a noticeable difference and gives it a very uh, concrete appearance. So, I'm going to do that around the rest of the way and then we'll work on that door. Alright, so we've got the light gray and the white applied. There were a couple of spots I got sort of heavy with the white, so I went back and took kind of that medium gray 
stippled that on and once it dried then I dry brushed back over it with the white to kind of try to blend it in a little bit and it gives some interesting texture and color variations so that wasn't a totally bad thing um, compared to the old one you can see this is a lot more almost exaggerated texture which on the table you know it's kind of what you need because your eye sort of expects to see it that didn't look bad and if, if that's how I was doing it now, it'd be fine. Um, but this is what we've got to work with today. So anyway, let's get to work on this door. One of the things I did notice is I used PVA to glue this piece onto the that scrap piece of foam core. And that much PVA apparently caused that to warp. On this previous building, I had just glommed it on there with some hot glue. So I spread a thin layer of PVA on the back and hopefully once that dries it'll push it back into shape. Um, generally if you paint one side of something and it warps, if you paint the other side with the same thing it'll kind of warp it back. So we'll see. In the meantime it's something for me to keep sticking my fingers in while I pick up this building. So that's a plus. But anyway, we're going to use our friend Quaker Gray again. And also, I should point out, I, there was a little bit of white showing through because that had flexed. So I went, took some thin down some black paint and laid it on the, the edges just to try and build up some shadow. And that was kind of a good thing anyway. Alright, so we'll just... Start laying that on that door just to try to build up a highlight on the very outer edge, the top of those ridges. Try not to get too heavy like I did there. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but it's just kind of annoying to have to go back and get a piece of plastic in your mouth. And just lay a little bit darker gray down in there. Probably put a little bit more black wash in there again later. But anyway, we're gonna let that dry and then we'll put on some silver. All right, so I took some of that thinned black paint that I still had on my palette and laid it down in there and that shaded that nicely. So we'll take a little bit of silver and dry brush that on just to give it that hint of metallic, metallicness. That's not even a word, but You want to make it so metallic that even Lars Ulrich would look at it and say, yep, that's metallic. And there you go, you get just that, just that hint. I guess we'll put a little bit more on there just to try to differentiate it from the rest of the building. But I did this last because if I glom some of the white on there or some lighter gray, that's fine. It's going to blend in okay, but I didn't want to start getting heavy-handed with metallics and then get that on everything else. And... Alright, so there's our metal door. Now at this point, 
You could also add lettering or numbers or any number of things, names. Um, and, and considering this is a garage for gas lands, um, that would probably be really keen. I don't have any teams set up or anything yet, so I don't have anything I'm going to paint on there right now. Later on, we'll probably revisit that add some lettering, some color, just to try to make it pop. You could even get some stencils and put some large numbers or letters on, on the very roof of the building. Um, that would give it some visual interest on the table. But uh, also when you highlight it, um, you'll note I, I hit really heavy on the edges just to try to make those pop. That kind of helps define that. It does, doesn't become just a gray blob. So there you have it. There's a, uh, a bunker garage for gas lands, or you could also use this for any number of post-apocalyptic scenarios, a munitions bunker, um, entrance to a survivalist compound, all kinds of good things you could do with it. Um, just the basic techniques and uh, the painting, yeah, it works for a lot of good stuff. So anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope that's helpful, and I really do appreciate you watching. Thanks, guys.